All right. Good morning, cyber friends. I should say, well, it's not quite morning yet. It's about 1143. And so it's not quite the next day just yet. But we still saying that we are giving God all the praise and glory. And uh, we thank him for life, health, and strength as well as it is. And uh, I did not know that I was going to come back a uh, third time <clears throat> with a video. But as I told y'all sometime. That does happen when the spirit of the Lord God moves on me. <clears throat> Gives me the unction to do these videos for a purpose. And I know it always for a good reason. I may not know it at that time, but it always works out. I'm just saying, this. you look at the title of the video, and it says, Looking Back on Prophecy. Looking Back on Prophecy. And what I mean by that is, with me, I'm looking back on my time and my study and my encounter with prophecy and the prophetic. I told y'all that I go a long way back in the prophetic teachings. Um, matter of fact, that uh, I, as y'all can see, I'm sitting in a straight chair right now. I took that other that old PC chair. I took it out of here. Uh, it was getting on my nerves. It's it's old and rapid and it's not. It's it just done the had its time, and so I got rid of it the night I put my leg on and took it out of here. And so now I'm sitting in a straight chair until I get my receive my other PC chair I ordered, and it will be here soon hopefully. But at any rate, back to the subject matter at hand. I started studying Bible prophecy, people, with Bishop Fulton Sheen, Dr. Howard E. Stepp, many, many years ago. I believe I started with Dr. Howard E. Stepp and Bishop Sheen in the late 60s, in the early 70s. I know it was the early 70s, but I, I believe it went further back in the late 60s. And I started with those two guys in the prophetic teachings. And I can remember Dr. Howard E. Stepp always talked about the book of Daniel. And uh, I learned a lot about the prophetic from his teaching about the book of Daniel. He made it plain. He made it clear. So did Bishop Fulton Sheen. They both talked a lot about the book of Revelation. And I'm just saying to all of you, like I said, I'm looking back on prophecy. And some of you may know may know Dr. Bishop Fulton Sheen and Dr. Howard E. Stepp. You may know him as well. And I, I as as time progressed, I became to know some other prophetic ministers and teachers. Uh, mainly Hal Lindsey, Grant Jeffries, as well as Perry Stone, and Dr. Jack Benippi. Uh, as well. And I could name a couple of others, but these, what I've named already, those are the, the main one. They uh in in fact, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say this and I hope I'm not offending anyone, but I don't mean to offend, but like I say, <clears throat> I am looking back on prophecy as I know it. Uh Brother Hal Lindsley is one of the last, I believe, of the old school prophetic teachers uh, that came up during that time. Uh, 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 Dr. Lindsley, as well as Howard E. Stepp. Uh, now, I'm not for certain that Hal had a program, a TV program, on during the time when Dr. E. Stepp and Dr. Sheen did. But I know that Hal was teaching during this time. I know that for a fact. But I came, I came to know Hal later on down the line in the early 70s when he was also a guest on TVN with uh, Paul Crouch. And Paul Crouch was crazy about Hal Lynn in his lifetime. He was very, very crazy about Hal. And I remember every prophetic show that they would have, I was always tuned in. I was always doing it. Now, I did not know. Now, I don't call Perry Stone an old school prophetic teacher. 
Now I don't know how long Perry has been at it, but I'm I'm Perry has not been at it as long as Bishop Sheen and uh Bishop or uh, Dr. Howby Step is nor Hal Linsley because of the fact that Perry Stone is not that much older than I am. And uh I think me and Perry Stone and all we Obama, we all read around the same matter of fact, me and old, me and Barack Obama the same age. Six we were born in sixty one. And I think if I'm not mistaken, I think Perry Stone was born around 1958, something like that there. So I know he doesn't go back. He doesn't qualify as old school prophetic. But nevertheless, he's very much prophetic in our time and during this year, modern time that we're living in. And we give him all the accolades. You can't take anything from Perry Stone. And I do not take anything away from him because he has studied with some of the great Jewish scholars and Jewish priests. He studied with them as well, and uh, he's very, very knowledgeable of the scripture. He done studied so many hours of it, and he he definitely well qualified. I'm just speaking of those old school, those old school uh, prophetic teachers like Hal Lindsey, Dr. Howard E. Stepp, Bishop Fulton Sheen. I go all the way back with them as far as the early 60s. And, uh, and like I told y'all on a, a video prior, that uh, we lost another prophetic teacher uh, back on my birthday, November 3rd of this year. We lost Bishop, I call him that, but his name is Dr. Irvin Baxter. Dr. Irvin Baxter, he had the program and it's still airing. It's called End of the Age, End of the Age broadcast. And he spoke on the prophetic. He spoke on the prophetic, very, very knowledgeable. And on point. And so I just came back to just share with my cyber friends, those of you that love the Bible study, that kind of follow me a little bit on the Bible study, let you know that Middle Man is yet studying the prophetic. I've been studying the prophetic now for about 50 years. And every time I study, I learn more and more and more. There's a lot that, uh, I was going to come back on perhaps maybe maybe not on this side of 2021, but nevertheless, I will be doing it on my Bible study if the Lord say so, if the Lord's will. And uh, I'm going to be dealing more with the prophetic. And let me say this here before I go on. I want y'all to know now when I say that I'm going to be dealing with the prophetic, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be telling you anything new. It's been in the Bible all the time. It's just that a lot of us don't study and we do not take the time to look into the, the heart of these things and therefore we don't know them and we take other people's word for it instead of looking in it to it for ourselves. So I'm going to do you a favor. I've already studied this, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to dig up some more nuggets. I still, I still believe that there are some things that I can find out to get to enlighten those of you that may want to know a little bit more about the prophetic. Number one, our best prophetic, the best prophetic teacher there was, was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, it's a lot of people don't know that, but he was. He was number one in prophecy. Jesus spoke a prophecy, most of his teaching, and he taught, he taught the prophetic. And Y'all, we got a lot to look forward to coming up. There's a lot of things ahead for this planet Earth and humankind. Uh, don't think that this thing is over by a long shot. It's not over, y'all, by a long shot. There are many things that got to happen still. There are many things that are going to happen. And uh, middle man is just going to sit here and just firmly tell you that all of it is not good. All of it's not good. But those of you who are rooted and grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't have anything to fear. But it is those that are without Christ in their life. They have everything to fear because there's something, it's some things coming upon this earth after a while. It's going to be unbearable to the unbeliever. Believe it. And Jesus told that, he said, those days will not shorten. 
no flesh would be saved. Now, Jesus was speaking of the prophetic there when he was speaking of the Antichrist, that soon coming man of sin that's going to come on this earth. And I do believe he's alive. I do believe he's alive and well, but he's not been revealed. In other words, the Holy Spirit is holding him back because the church is not through yet. The church is not through. In other words, I had a minister, a pastor. He's a pastor friend. He's a, he's a, he's a minister of the gospel. He's still a pastor. And right now his name is Reverend uh, John Arthur Severson. And I can remember, I joined the church upon one of his revival meetings back in the early 70s at my home church. I joined the church there uh, under that uh, his revival meeting that he performed there at my church. And when my pastor at that time was the, re the late Reverend Ian Dixon. And uh, I never will forget that one of, one of Reverend Stevenson's sermons were when the church get through, I never will forget that. That was the week that I joined Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, and I was baptized on that Friday night. The sermon was, when the church get through. You see, people, the church is by no means and no way through yet. Uh-uh. Too many souls still to be saved. It's too many people that are still lost. The church is not through. And I think about something my pastor said today in our Sunday school that lets me know that we need to get busy. Not and in and another lady that spoke, I think her name was Miss Sister Perry. Um, she, I believe, she was from Greater Morris uh, Missionary Baptist Church, which is my pastor's father's church in Cordell, Georgia. And she made a great statement about the same thing. We need to get busy outside of the four walls of the church. And then guess what? Y'all, this pandemic had made a golden opportunity for us to be outside of the walls of the church. God got us out of those churches and into the environment where we could be of some 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 use to him and his men in, in, in the gospel. But you know what? A lot of us have not really taken the uh initiative. We have not taken um uh, the responsibility that the God-given call that all Christians is supposed to be, uh, that is supposed to be, uh, we are all called into the ministry of an evangelist. We have not been doing what we're supposed to do, the reaching out to a sinner mankind. And this got something to do with prophetic, the prophetic as well, my brothers and my sisters. And I'm not trying to come and get real. Uh, I'm not trying to give be, be a doomsday prophet or nothing like that. No, 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 no. I'm just telling you the truth. These things are going to happen. They're going to come. You might as well get ready for it. Now, let me tell y'all something. We got a lot of people that we bent on getting out of here. A lot of us Christians, we, we are bent on getting out of here. But I want to I, I wanna tell y'all something. I want to tell you something. I want to, I want you to go and read it for yourself. See, Jesus did not ask his father to get us out of here. No, he didn't. No, he did not. He said, he, these are his words. And I, 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 I'm, a, I'm trying to quote them verbatim, but I might make a mistake and leave a word or two out, but take it for love. But go and read John 17 yourself. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Jesus never told his father to get us out of here. No. And we never, nevertheless, we got a lot of Christians hollering, oh, we're going to be gone. We're going to be gone. We're going to, what about the sinner man? We need to be thinking about evangelizing this world, not getting out of here. Let me tell you something. Jesus never said anything about getting us out of here. He didn't pray for his father to get us out of here. John 17 tells us plainly, Jesus said, Father, I do not pray that you would remove them out of this world, but I want you to keep them away from the evil one. That's what Jesus prayed for. See, Jesus needs us in this world to do the work of an evangelist. We ain't supposed to be running from no antichrist. 
Jesus never told us to run for no antichrist. He didn't say that in his word. But nevertheless, we got these people, they are bent on. And you know what, y'all? I realize the Apostle Paul said that we'll be a gathering. I realize that. But he didn't say when. He did not say when. So I'm telling y'all that we'll be a gathering. But it's going to be after the church get through. We're not through, y'all. We're, we're not even halfway through. We got a plenty of work that needs to be done. And, you know, I don't know about y'all, but many man's going to try to do all he can to do the best he can to do my part. I'm going to do what I can do. That's all God asked me. He not asked me to try to do what you do, but he did ask me to do what I can do. And me and my leg and a half, we're going to try to do all we can do to do the work of the event. Like, like, the, like the Apostle Paul said, we need to be about God's business. And uh, like I said, I just wanted y'all to know about the prophetic, about the old school. And I did say how Lindsley is one of the last of the old school prophetic teachers that I remember that I used to teach. And I, I studied up on the, and these men were men, men of God that were, that were very well versed in scripture about the end times and prophetic. They knew what they were talking about. I followed them to the letter. Chapter and verse, I followed them, and I never saw anything where they erred at. Not yet, and I'm yet living. So that's how come I wanted to share that part about the prophetic with uh, all my cyber friends and those of you that may be new and come across this. Do not think that this world is going to blow up in oblivion because it's not going to happen like that, people. It's not going to happen. I wish I could tell you how it's going to happen. But the only thing I know is that you need to be rooted, grounded and rooted in Christ. And then let don't worry about the other stuff. That Just let it happen as it happens. But if you don't have Christ on your side, you will not be able to stand what's going to come upon this world. Because it's going to be some, it's some tremendous amount. Of, it's some catastrophic things, my brothers and sisters. It's got to yet happen to this earth. Now, a lot of y'all, y'all been complaining and belly aching about COVID-19. But honey, COVID-19 is a walk in the park compared to what's yet, yet to come. COVID-19 is just a walk in the park compared to what's yet to come. You better read your Bibles and study it and look at these things that are soon to come upon this earth. And it's not to scare nobody, but it's to let you know that you need to get yourself rooted and grounded in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, y'all, is our ark. It's our ark. Just as it's the ark that Noah built in his day that saved humanity, Jesus is the ark for us that's going to save us and usher us into eternity. That's the gospel, y'all. That's the true gospel. So with that being said, many man, hope and pray that this video will get on some hearing ears and Somebody will get something from it, and, and uh, it will touch you, and that will lead you and make you turn and repent. In other words, we our Sunday school lesson, they were about uh, John, the forerunner of Christ, came preaching repentance. And that's exactly what we need to do in this day and time. We need true repentance. So with that said, this middle man saying, whatever you get, whatever you get into, if God ain't in it, please, man, please, sir, come on out of it. Because it's going to come to nothing. Until the next video, next Bible study, whichever comes first, this is the Man saying peace and good morning.